And welcome once again, dear friends, to our daily devotional. Well, we're starting a new week. It is Monday, June 8th, 2020. We're so very glad to have you aboard with us again. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church right here in Topeka, Kansas. So glad again that you can join us for these daily devotionals. You know, we keep these to right at 10 minutes, maybe a few seconds under. I try to not go over the 10 minute mark so that way you don't have to feel like you're going to be sitting here listening to me all day but i really treasure these times and i hope i hope you do too and you can listen to them here and there you can listen to them every day i know some folks say they listen to them every day when they're having their coffee or it's part of their devotionals and so that really is wonderful because i'm hoping that these will be an encouragement to you amen that's really what it's all about we're just sharing here and hoping that these will be something that will be edifying and encouraging to you so before we begin today let's have a word of prayer shall we lord i just thank you again for loving us so much and your grace is sufficient lord and no matter what's going on in the world around us lord you are our rock you are our salvation and to you we can go with all of our concerns and our problems lord and even our joys lord that you are just there to listen you're there to comfort us and to Hold us in your loving arms. And Lord, I just thank you for being such a good God, a caring God, forgiving God, a loving God, a merciful God, a gracious God, all these wonderful attributes. Lord, a true God. Lord, you are you are just awesome. And we are so grateful to know you. And Lord, help us to now, Lord, just take these next few minutes to think about your goodness in our lives. We thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, we do serve a great God, a good God, a, a loving God. You know, I, I think about the attributes of God that they just are so evident in my life. And I, I think the most important thing is I don't deserve any of them. You know, it's just all by the grace of God that I have this ability to be in a relationship with him. It's the greatest gift that any of us could ever hope to receive. And here we have this gift and we are so grateful for it. If you don't know the Lord, it's simple. You just ask him into your heart. You know, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And just tell him that you need him. Tell him you, you, you've had your failings. You've had your times of making mistakes and that you've sinned and that you now need a Savior that can forgive you of your sins and, and bring you into that relationship with God that is only available through faith in Christ. Because, you know, he came as the living uh, spotless blameless son of god the eternal son of god who came to earth in the form of a little baby jesus christ in that manger of bethlehem so many years ago and he lived that perfect life so he could go to the cross on our behalf fully god fully man and take our sins upon himself offering us in instead of the sins that we gave to him his righteousness that he gave to us and and then he rose from the dead after his burial and he ascended into heaven i was thinking today as i was taking my morning walk you know we serve a living savior we don't serve a historical figure that we can go and see a monument and a grave no we have a savior who has no grave there is no monument that signifies this is the place of his burial jesus christ defeated death the devil and sin and he rose from the grave we have a victorious savior and the thought came to me this morning because I was listening to a pastor on the radio. And sometimes you might listen to a pastor. You might even listen to something I say or somebody else says. And your mind will drift off a little bit. It's not so much your mind drifting off, I don't think, as it is the Holy Spirit giving you a little tap on the shoulder and, and giving you an insight that he need, you needed to hear. And... The thought was this, that Jesus Christ came into the world, and this, this minister used this word, I think, he exposed sin. And I thought, you know, where would we have been, where would this world have been if Jesus had not come in and exposed the darkness and the depravity and the desperation that we as human beings find because we don't have a Savior? Jesus came as the light into the darkness. I remember the movie that comes out every year at christmas time you've probably seen it or at least you may have heard of it the movie is called it's a wonderful life with jimmy stewart in the starring role 
And though I haven't seen the movie in quite some time, I believe it had to do with a man who was feeling very despondent, feeling like a failure. And an angel came down to show this particular man what he had he not been doing what he was supposed to be doing, what God called him to do in, in so many respects. And the world had become a much darker place as, as a result of this man not being there and shining his light as God gave him the ability. Well, I think we could certainly draw a correlation between that and the idea of what Christ came to do. He came not only to save us, but I believe he came to show us that we need him. You know, sometimes we don't know we need the Savior until we see how desperate we have become. And, and, and in our desperation, sometimes we may not even know we're desperate. So we need that light to shine to kind of show us where we're at, to give us that, I guess you'd call that up to the minute report on how we are actually doing, not how we think we're doing, not how we're doing in relation to the rest of the world, but how are we really doing? And I believe that's what Jesus came. He showed us by his presence, by his holiness, his righteousness, what it means to be a human being here on earth and how far short we fall in our own human nature. And we need a savior. And that's what Jesus came to be for us was our savior. One more quick thought. And then we go into our scripture for today. You may have seen the picture recently when they began to open up our country after this coronavirus and little steps here, little steps there. And there was a scene that they showed of a huge mass gathering of people at a swimming pool down by the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. Now there were other scenes, but that's the one that stood out to me. And I'm not so concerned about people choosing to be together that's going to be their choice and they're going to have to deal with the consequences unfortunately sometimes those consequences spill over to our health care system and puts a real burden on them. but in this particular case what i felt was a lot of sadness for people because it reminded me of the bible verse of people just ignoring the warning signs that god is giving them that he's coming back and there is going to be a judgment day and the Bible says that you know people were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and marrying. And in the meantime, the return of Christ, judgment day is at hand. And are we ready for that? And, and almost as if people are going, we don't care. We'll deal with that later. Well, you know, there's going to come a time when we have to deal with it. And now's the time to get ready, not to act like there's no issues ahead of us. We have to start getting ready spiritually. We have to get our hearts right with God and make sure we are ready to go to be with him if he calls us. And so that was just a little picture that I got out of that scene that was on the internet and on television. And like I said, I hope we're ready. I hope we're all ready. And we need to tell our relatives, this is not so much about this coronavirus as it is. We just all need to be ready spiritually every day. We need to be right with God. Amen. Well, let's read our scripture passage real quick here. It is going to be found today in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Well, friends, today I want to tell you that Jesus is Lord. He is Savior. He is the Son of God. And he's our coming King. He's going to come back. We need to be ready for him. Let's get our hearts right with God. Amen. All right, let's close today in a word of prayer, shall we? Father, again, it's just such a blessing to be with our friends today via our devotionals that we're doing online and i thank each person for listening i thank those who are responsible for putting these online now lord i ask for your blessing upon each person listening give them a good day give them a good week we ask this now in jesus name amen well again thank you for joining us today i wish you a wonderful week and come back and see us tomorrow at kaumc.church until then may god richly bless you is my prayer